what we have is a simple triathlon test set up. This is a, a mechanism which uh, will lift the cylinder with a sample on it. It's lifted against the fixed crosshead. The sample, the sample will be sitting in here with a uh, shell around it. When the mechanism lifts and pushes the sample up, the top of the sample will be resting here and the load is transmitted up for a load cell. The entire cell will be driven upwards and we measure the displacement of the, of the cell versus the top of the sample here. The cell has water in it from our pressure distribution panel. These three items measure pressures within the cell and within the sample. One of them measures the pressure in the cell, one of them measures the water pressure at this surface, the other one measures the water pressure at the top surface. So you can actually measure the pressure inside of the sample during the test. We can also control whether we let pressure dissipate or be locked into the sample during the test to get different results. The panel provides us with ability to provide pressure to all three locations, the cell, the top, and the bottom of the sample. And we can also monitor the change in volume during the test by watching the water columns change. So our sample has been, been stacked up, and what we've got is, in the bottom we have a porous stone, we have a piece of filter paper, so that's on both the top and the bottom. This is going to go in the machine. The, the Pour stone and the filter paper are to allow the water pressure in the system to be equalized across the entire surface. This is the membrane that just goes around the sample and forms a watertight seal between the water in the column and the water in the sample. Um, this, the, the brass thing is just a uh, fixture to get it onto there. And we need to slip this down over top of our sample, hopefully. So you've sucked, the air, you've sucked the air out of there so that you can fit it over top of the sample. Yeah. There is a small amount of clearance just in Very case. So now you're holding the ends of that, uh, what would you call it, rubber sleeve over top of the uh, acrylic cylinder top. And that will form a watertight seal around the sample as we apply pressure around the surface. Make sure there are no imperfections in your rubber sleeve. So now we are connecting what to the so, top? So this connects the water system right. to the top cap. The bottom cap, of course, is already in place. So now we've prepared our sample, placed it onto the machine, placed a rubber sleeve over top of it, and secured it in place with rubber o-rings and finally we connected the top cap to our water system. Now there's two connections there. Why are there two connections? Well, technically there's a, there's a inflow and an outflow. 
Okay. Okay. Um, you, one one side is directly connected to the, our water supply. It so it goes into the top cap and from the back of the top cap goes into the pressure transducer at the end. Okay. So that's why there are two of them. So we're now filling the space between the outside casing and the sample with water. And as we do this, air is escaping through the valve at the top. So now we're lowering the load cell onto our testing mechanism. It's going to be loaded from the bottom and the load cell in blue there will record the axial load. The interface on the screen is, shows us what's happening within the cell and what's happening with the, the, the drive mechanism. Each of our instruments has a, has a, a readout, so we, we have the, the load, displacement of the top of the sample versus the bottom of the sample, or displacement of the sample. We have the cell pressure, which is the confining pressure around our sample, and we have the pore water pressures at the top and the bottom. Um, we'll eventually see a graph here of the load versus displacement and uh, uh, pressures versus displacement of, of the, uh, the three pressure. The system set up to, to uh, be able to save this into a data file for later uh, examination um, and analysis. Um, but basically, this acts in a very passive way and just collects data over the life of the, of the, the test. Okay, so we've set up the uh, software so that it's recording uh, the data from the triax test. Ready to go. And we're ready to go. Every test is going to have a confining pressure, so we have to set the confining pressure. That'll be determined by exactly what test you want to do, where the sample came from, how deep it was, all those factors. Okay. Um, for today's example, what we'll do is we'll ramp up the, the cell pressure to approximately 200 kPa. Um, we are going to do a what is called a quick undrained test which basically means that the water that's within the sample is not going to be allowed to drain out, so we're going to seal off the water connections to our panel. Uh, so the water pressure in the sample should rise as it's being squished like a balloon um, because of the vertical compression. Um, so what I'll do first off is I will set the uh, cell pressure to 200 kPa. Turning the knob up there. And 47, 48. Increasing the water pressure in the cell. Okay, so now we have a pressure inside the cylinder of 200 kilopascals. Okay, so we've begun displacing the sample and the cell upwards against the fixed top cap. So effectively, we start the test. We're currently running at a rate of 0.25 millimeters per minute. We specified that in the software there. Okay. And um, we're all practical terms so of as, uh, as we compress the sample, what do we expect the uh, load? I can see that the displacement is moving up slowly, and the load is increasing. So we have load on this side, and displacement.
So the sample appears to have failed in shear. We have a bulge down here, and on the back side we have the upper side. So hopefully we have a shear plane down through the sample this way. We've stopped loading. We are going to unload it, uh, drain the cell itself of water, and remove the sample so we can unwrap the sample and see what this actually looks like. So we're opening the valve on the tank and you can see the water being drained. So the sample has been drained and now we're taking apart the mechanism. We took off the three clamps that were holding the top on, taken off the top, and now we're taking off the sleeve. This is what the sample looks like after the test. We're going to take off the end piece and the o-rings as well as the rubber sleeve the pour stone and paper I'm just going to slip it back so as it seems. We've got a failure plane somewhere through here. Okay. So the sample has failed in shear. It's a partial shear, shear failure. So in this sample, we have a clear failure line from this side to here, which indicates that the soil sample was very dense. 